Dodger is a, a bulldog, and bulldogs have a lot of different problems with them because we've taken a long snout and we squished it in. So they have breathing problems, they have a lot of loose skin as you can see, and also that trans transmits to a lot of loose skin down in their throat. So bulldogs have breathing problems, so don't ever get them in real hot climates without paying real close attention to them or hot in areas because they can have heat stroke really easy. They can't evaporate the, or dissipate the heat as well as other dogs. But Dodger has a problem in his butt, near his butt area. He has a tail that is so pinned down to his butt that he can't get it up and he always has a rash under there and we'll show it to you uh, and we'll show it to you under an aesthetic because I'm actually going to remove this whole fold in this tail because it keeps getting inflammation down there and keeps having all kinds of problems. Ew. If you look at this tail, it's pressing so hard down into here, there's there's really no way to get it up. It's called the screw tail and it causes constant infection. So that's why we're going to get rid of it. Uh, bulldogs have been bred to have this tail, and 75% of them have bad backs and can have tail problems and breathing problems. So make sure that your bulldog doesn't have these problems. When you look at buying one, you should always look at the parents and see how they look before you make that commitment. So let's see if we can take the tail off and make this Dodger a little bit more comfortable. Anesthetizing a bulldog is very important that you monitor them closely because of their breathing problems. But usually the problems occur getting a tube down in the windpipe and then when they wake up. But you can see over here the, the uh, oxygen is 96 and the heart rate's 115. So everything's looking good. So I'm going to try to make an incision. Of course, I want to I want to get the incision in here above the anus and above the, the screw tail area. And there's plenty of loose skin, so I'll have plenty of loose skin to play with. But I don't want the fold. So you can see why it's kind of called screw tail because it goes around like that. So I'm going to make an incision around the folds and on top of this fold. some of this extra skin so that this isn't this is just getting in the way it's part of the screw tail it's part of the extra skin they have so I've taken all the extra skin off um, of the tail so I can really feel it here the tail we're whittling it down to size now there it is now here's the tail and so I'm getting down to where this is the extra skin above it, so I'm just getting down to the normal amount of skin on the tail. Because I don't want to take any extra skin below where the anus is, so I have to really figure out where the where the tail is. So now I'm, I'm cutting the, the, this was the tail that was so far down there, I'm actually cutting it off and I'm getting rid of the attachments. Here's the end of the bone, right here and I'm going to cut it loose from the surrounding tissue. So here's the screw tail part of it. That's the little tail that's left. And then now I have to get rid of the excess skin that's in the incision. So now I'm uh, changing out all the... Isabel's changing. We're putting up clean surgical stuff because uh, this uh, wound got really infected. I mean, got really contaminated by all the infection. So that's what I have to sew up now. There's no more tail. Just a frowny face incision. Like, unhappy. I would be unhappy if I was this bull. And uh, Bulldog's doing well. His color's pink. His vitals are good. 
96% oxygen and the rate's 90, 97% oxygen and the rate's 96. Nice EKG, nice and regular. So what I do, I always uh, start out whenever I close a wound, I just do several places to see how it looks. So I have one right at 12 o'clock and we'll pull that in and see what, the, see what it looks like. So we're gonna, we're gonna pull that piece of skin in to the other piece. See how that looks. And then we're going to go on the sides. So the sub-Q stitch, it goes, it always goes up because you want the knot to be down there underneath and then it goes down on this one, so up on that one, down on this one. Then you pull all the excess suture through and then you uh, put your throws on which is like a square knot and you just knot it. And you can see it's starting to go together pretty good. So the scissors are starting to come together real nice. Um, I'm just trying to sew up uh, as much of the sub-Q as I can um, in order so that it heals nice underneath. Use skin sutures above the subcutaneous sutures in areas that are going to be uh, under a lot of stress or chance of infection. You we want their skin stomach. edges to be sealed up as tight as they can be to prevent that. The um, stomator is... Uh... So this is what it looks like afterwards. Here's all the skin sutures. And there's the anus deep in there with a little poop coming out. Um, and then it goes around like that. So this is, this is the anal area. This is where the tail was, but there's no longer any tail because I cut it all off. Like after it's all washed up. And on that right hind leg, you can see a pain patch that delivers continuous pain relief to the Dodger over three days. All dogs have to be closely monitored when they're recovering. So we always check their color, make sure it's nice and pink, check the tube, check their eyes, make sure they're still blinking and kind of with it so that we can make sure that the recovery under anesthetic is going like we want, which is uneventful. Because of their breathing problems, you just can't put them in a cage like we can other dogs once they start to swallow and chew. So we watch for that moment where we think they can start breathing on their own without the tube. Dodger's not smoking anything uh, of plastic tube. That's a plastic tube in Dodger's throat as Dodger wakes up in surgery. So we'll see what we're doing. We're watching Dodger real close because bulldogs, when they wake up for surgery, you gotta make sure they're breathing well uh, before we take the tube out. So we wait, we wait longer in a bulldog than we do other breeds. So let's see if Dodger's in there. Are you in there, Dodger? Dodger, are you in there? There's the tube going down your trachea. There's your nice pink tongue. That means you're getting oxygen really good. How you doing, Dodger? So, when he starts to chew and when he starts to breathe hard like that, we generally think it's time to take the tube out. I'd like to show you his eyes are open, but you can't see with all that skin. Dodger, are you ready? He is pushing it. Get out. Okay. So we pulled it out, and there's the tracheal tube. And then we watch to make sure he's breathing. We'll just leave him out like that and make sure that his head's uh, he's sternal and that he's uh, breathing well. Watch his color. Uh, and hopefully he leaves his butt alone. So his teeth, tongue's nice and pink after the tube's out, which means he's still getting really good oxygen. You can hear him breathing in that bulldog way. A couple days after surgery, this is what the sutures look like. Whenever you see sutures, they're going to look goopy. 
sometimes a little red, but it's, it's holding together, and the crusts are sometimes normal, especially when there's a lot of surgery. So it looks kind of like a heart now. You really well, I hope Dodger's frowning butt incision didn't gross you out too much. And you saw that after a couple of days, there were some crusts and scabs. But remember, whenever your dog has surgery, there's the suture underneath the skin called the subcutaneous stitch and the ones above the skin. So a lot of people think that when that top suture or the skin suture comes out that, that the suture is just going to come right open. Truth is that it, it, if the dog licks all the, ins, uh, all the sutures, they all can come out and the dogs are often our worst enemy. That's why we put the cone on Dodger to prevent Dodger from licking the sutures out of his butt incision. That's pretty medical, isn't it? Butt incision. But anyway, after a couple of days, there was a little crustiness. And of course, Dodger has to, had to keep the uh, cone on and stay on antibiotics and a little sedatives so that the two weeks will pass and we can make sure that that tail is going to heal up like it should. And uh, I'll let you know how that progresses. My uh, book, Dog Dish Diet, is now a Kindle, and you can get that at Amazon.com, and then type in Dog Dish Diet, and it'll take you to the to the where you can download it as a Kindle for only $9.99. I'm so passionate about using nutrition along with medications because I have so much more success. The reason why your vet might not talk so much about nutrition is we weren't taught that. We were just taught that every dog should get along on most kibbles. And the truth is, most dogs can eat um, about anything, but there's 30 to 40 percent of them that have chronic medical problems that really sometimes clear up easily with better nutrition. And that's why I write it, right? That's why I wrote the book Dog Dish Diet. That's why I want to keep educating because I just can't stand the thought of millions of dogs out there suffering just because they just need a different way to eat. So if you get a chance, check out my website, my book, and, and uh, spread the word because um, I'm very passionate about this because I love dogs and, and cats. I'm a cat person too. I should write a book someday about cats, but it's so labor intensive just with the dog book that that might be a uh, year down the road. Anyway, have a great day.